taken from the light to be raised in darkness. Your truth is finally dawning, Shadowheart. You can follow its light, or you can retreat back into dusk. The truth is finally dawning. Shadowheart can follow its light, or she can retreat back into dusk. First in my heart. Shadowheart was no true child of Shah, merely a captive. She must have her vengeance. Poor Shadowheart. She's been jerked around so much. I want to believe the gods keep this world balanced, but sometimes. sometimes I wonder. Be gone, friend. I have a darling to adore. Our thoughts are as one, my friend. You must face the Chosen of Bane and Baal. I will do my part to see them laid low. The gate is closed. As is Casador. Casador and his right of profane ascension. An imperious soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their necks. We will kill him, but there's more to it. Think about it. It sounds like Casador, for all his evils, has gotten further than any of my kind ever have. He's on the verge of a miracle. This may be a beginning, not an end. I can see myself now. Lord, King, Master. If the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. <laughs> Doesn't it sound delightful? For the lucky little vampire on the winning side. After 200 years of shit, pure shit! I think I deserve something better. I know you do. It matters to me as well. I want to be able to protect you, too. All I'm saying is, let's be clever about it. If an opportunity arises for me to become a more magnificent bastard than I already am, why turn it down? Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Casador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Casadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. So. It's a quest to free Shadowheart's parents, is it? And here I was, worried I'd be the only one with a difficult family reunion waiting in the city. I was supposed to sacrifice myself to stop the Absolute. Yeah, I don't think I could have gone through with it, in truth. 
And I'm glad that I didn't, given what has come to light. Indeed. Under other circumstances, I might have been subdued or ashamed. But after what we saw, I must admit, I'm excited. The Elder Brain. But more importantly, the crown that it wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power. The ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but... No matter. It exists. I must learn more of it. That crown sits on a gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep, Sorceress Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. Ha! Sorcerer's Sundries is no mere trading post. It's been serving the arcane community for centuries. Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. <laughs> Nethery sects are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. Never a dull moment. Painful truths have been thrust upon Shadowheart. I believe she is strong enough to endure, but her path will be easier with our support. Only by reputation. She was present when we marched against Ketherick Thorm, but on the far end of the battle lines from where I fought. And in the chaos that ensued, well, our forces were scattered. I led some to safety, but never learned of her fate. I'm glad to hear she survived. Though in truth, I should not be surprised. She was always said to be formidable and cunning. I could have learned much from her, no doubt. There is much to admire, judging by the stories. I cannot help but wonder how she would have handled some of the challenges I faced as Archdruid. Would she have helped the refugees? Defended the Grove? Controlled Korga? At least now we can benefit from her presence, and perhaps work to a common goal. Given the circumstances, you're faring as well as can be expected, I suppose. What would you like to know? Hmm. I had a friend when I was young, long ago. He played with me in the forests where I grew up. But eventually, I realized no one else had heard of him. It was Daniel, of course. Nature was my very first friend. I get older, but he hasn't changed a day. I knew then that I had to be more than a companion to him. I had to be a protector. <laughs> You're not a doppelganger, are you? Trying to study me to learn all my secrets so you can take my place? <laughs> Save for me. My line perished a long time ago. They rest in High Forest now, near the shade of the Grandfather Tree. The Grove became my family, with Sylvanus as my teacher. And now I have you. It 
It was a long time ago. The wounds don't heal, but they become more bearable. I am? <laughs> Trust me, it's been said. You show more restraint than most in avoiding the subject until now. It's a natural question, but I don't have a good answer, I'm afraid. Perhaps there's an, a half-orc buried somewhere in my ancestry. Or perhaps not. Sometimes I think conventional wisdom is too narrow about what someone can or cannot be. Stranger things have most certainly happened. Anytime. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of Mind Flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the astral prison and the mysterious visitor inside of it. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. to the portal. I need your help.
choice but to keep going. These boots have seen everything. is my happy place. under attack.
Let's go. It's not over. Come to the skull. your best attempts to be subtle, the Mind Flayer's awareness is everywhere. You blunder in its presence like a walk pup learning to walk. You must be joking. I am telling you my thoughts directly into your head. But if you insist on taking a look for yourself, existence to date could have prepared you for this. As the horror subsides, you are left with only one coherent thought. You must do whatever you can to subdue the Githyanki. Happy? Now, join me. Fight! Come 
So much for peace.
out is through. Jimmy on the go. This is worth the cost. Thank you. That was too close. Don't look at me like that. I am a Mind Flayer, yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the Absolute. Of all the things to be indebted to, a bloody Mind Flayer. I suppose it was considerate of you not to bring it up before, and I ask that you do not judge me for it now. I was someone once. Someone just like you. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate. Though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me. Changed me into what I am now. the absolute I was a thrall like any other but I was fortunate I broke free and started a new life in my old city I sustained myself on criminals unglamorous but there are plenty of them rarely missed and they fueled me when I did my work I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillman we formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Not all Mind Flayers are alike. I have always valued freedom above all else. In my past life, and present. It has been a burning need within me for as long as I can remember.
Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus's mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus's mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlacheth declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlacheth wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my home on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blacketh was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. No. Gortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside. And found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, you would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. I appreciate that, but this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel. But the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent Alithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you.
The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? Even as you say the words, you feel a lurch of disappointment. Your mind bristles with the potential. How could you be so cruel as to deny yourself what you want most in the world? I felt that. It's your nature. You cannot fight it. So embrace it. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. A wave of disappointment, stronger than any you've ever felt. And then... Stillness. You have resisted your illithid instincts. For now. You are not ready yet. Keep hold of it then. Until you are. It has enough vitality to further your evolution. And your allies. Perhaps you will be more inclined to try it when you see more of what our enemy can do. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. Already feeling better. So, there's been a mind flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something? What's on your mind? Great powers, huh? I'm skeptical. Thought you'd be too. Especially if this thing wants to turn you into, what, a half squid? Not surprised you haven't tried it yourself yet. <sighs> Thank the gods. lack of tentacles to one of the very creatures that kidnapped us and now it's offering us power if we're willing to evolve we both know what it is capable of but i'm not touching it that was before i knew the cost before I knew it meant transforming into some grotesque beast. I remember how it hurt when I turned into a vampire. My body writhed and warped while I was utterly helpless. The grip of death owned my heart as it beat its last. 
I don't want to turn into anything else. I can't do that again. I can't watch my body be taken over. If we master the temples, it will be different. But right now, that mastery depends on an illithid and its Githyanki slave. I'm not going to submit to this. Don't ask me again. Be honest. What do you think of the new look? Well, I'm glad someone does. Perhaps I'll get used to it. I have a lot to get used to right now. Love Shadowheart's new look. Softer, less severe. It suits her. Your parasite communes with Lysel's. Her heart races as she learns of the events inside the astral prison. Orpheus, Gith's only son. He lives. It is not the Gaith visitor that Vlakith would destroy and Vos would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlakith. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Yes. Our current queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was, is, Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup against Vlakith I. It was Kithrak Vos himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshis teach us. Yet the Prince of the Comet's been with us, subdued by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would tear Vlakith's empire to pieces and build new glory from the scraps. The seed and the sower. Every word Voss spoke, he spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the Queen's lies and the living weapon that conquered our Gaith slavers. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words, and they would bow to the true heir. If the Githyanki are to be free, the Prince of the Comet must lead the way. What about him? The Emperor may be loathsome, but it's right. Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind. A talent like that makes the Prince a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Why destroy a weapon like that when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself? The historical slates describe Orpheus as a fearsome, terrible creature. Powerful beyond measure, and enthralled by the Geich. So mad with power, he'd smash through the Githyanki Empire and deliver the shards to his illithid masters. And glowing with such psionic force that he and his red dragon blazed a trail through the skies. A lethal comet careening towards my people. 
Lies, of course. Vlakid spread a false image of Orpheus as monstrous betrayer, and her knights as the butchers who sliced him through. She was right to fear him, I'll grant her that. So great is the comet, it could shatter her reign. A weapon is only an asset for as long as it isn't pointed at you. The means of Vlacket's own end has been ripped away from her. Better to have Orpheus killed than to risk his escape. Better to risk the rise of Elithids than let the Prince of the Comet deny her the godhood she craves. Orpheus' is honor guard, loyal to the end. Trapped by Vlacketh in the same prism holding their noble prince, fruitlessly hacking at the sphere that contains him. They see us as geich, tadpoled husks in the Emperor's thrall. I regret their deaths, but I pledge to live as they perished, in the service of Gith's son. Very well. Something is different about Shadowheart. New facial creases, perhaps. A fresh battle scar I hadn't noticed. Bah, it eludes me. It also promises to break us beyond repair. This ossified parasite does not make us more, but less. There will be ice where once there was fire. There will be a void where our souls once resided. I know, and I won't. God, Shadowheart looks like a stack of gold. <laughs> Never thought I could get so excited about someone's forehead, but here we are. No more radiant sight than that of someone who's learned to love themselves anew. Shadowed in name, but no longer in spirit. It suits her. Oh, we have a new look for a new shadow heart. Nice as it is, she still doesn't have the best hair in the camp. We must find where Gortash and Orin have established themselves, and take their nether stones. How much further can I go? The city is close now. My former peers will be watching, no doubt. Waiting for my return. We should do what we can to find them. What they know could help us. Um, excuse me. I can't find my mum. Um, she was sick. She had spots on her face and hands. She went to go get some herbs, and she was supposed to come back the same day. That was last ten day, though. Oh, um, thank you so much. I don't have anything, and you can't do anything without any coin. I'll pay you back when I find my mum.
The place was empty. Keep those thugs away from my family. Denuvia! Get these squatters out of my house now! Arthur, sweetheart, you paid me and my boys to be caravan guards, not cattle wranglers. If you want us to get our hands dirty, it'd be our pleasure. But that'll be extra. You shouldn't have to make people feel welcome in places they don't belong. I just want to remove these unlawful interlopers from my property. Let them stay here? What if the little brat gets into the basement? Excuse me. I'm exceedingly charitable. Ask anyone in this wretched town. It's one thing to donate extremely generously to those less fortunate than oneself, and quite another to give away one's entire house. I'm a very magnanimous individual, but this is my home! Either they leave, or I'll make them! I'm fine. They can stay. Just don't blame me when they turn on you like the mongrels they are. I respect your hustle, sweetheart. But it won't work on me. You've stepped on the guild's toes. And we'd like a little something to make it better. The guild? A loose coalition unifying every criminal outfit in the city under one collective rule, from cut purses to contract killers. I'd say you'll live to regret it, but honestly, I'm not so sure you'd live. I think you're overestimating your abilities somewhat. But I haven't got time for this. Come on, boys. We've got places to be. On my way. We're lucky there's still decent folk about. Heartless scum. I'm a reasonable woman. We could easily work something out in a house this big. I'm not quite sure why you stood up for us like that. But I won't say I'm not grateful. Thanks. And may Torm keep you. Same way lots of us did. Trying to get away from the army of the Absolute. If you had the chance to put a roof over your family's heads after being on the run for Torm knows how long, wouldn't you? We will stay, for now. 
I just hope he doesn't pay anyone else to come sniffing round. Thank you. And may Torm keep you. You're the first person in this city to have our backs. Thank you. Really. To threaten us. To threaten the children. Cinta was trembling. She'll be all right. She's oh, delicious. How for a skeleton key? Never a dull moment. Hmm. Now we don't have to leave. I'm gonna build a big house for all the rats. It's gonna be really fancy. You'll see. Keep your distance, darling. Trams. How considerate. Be careful. There are traps about. Trams. How considerate. Hardly a challenge. Let's see here.
Hardly the home of a sweet, generous soul. It might be worth looking into his donations. Who knows what he's been giving?